I was originally going to uh, give a talk on the history of avocational archaeology on the Coconino National Forest, but I realized that there's no way I could do it in 20 minutes. I couldn't do it in 30 minutes, and I couldn't do it in an hour. So I'm going to specialize, uh, and in honor of the, most of the people who have given papers here today, is to just look at what the Verde Valley Archaeological Society has done over the years uh, on behalf of uh, the Forest Service and archaeology. Volunteerism uh, of, between archaeologists and avocationalists is nothing new. One of our favoritest archaeologists in history, Jesse Walter Fuchs, made abundant use of it. Uh, when he went to the Verde Valley and into Prescott, he worked with the local people, or actually asked them, where are the sites, and they took him to them. That forms the basis for almost all of his BAE reports. And when he returned in 1912 to excavate at Tonanki and Palatki, he hired Sherman Loy's grandfather, who you see in the cowboy hat, to help him excavate and tell him more about sites in the area. One of the earliest projects was to assist the museum here in its excavations at the Stoneman Lake site, which is at the intersection of Stoneman Lake Road and I-17 today. It's an important site that uh, shows evidence of both, that shows evidence of northern style, early Sanawa pit house architecture on the outskirts of the Verde Valley. In other parts of the Verde, a little bit lower in elevation than this, we find that we also have Hohokam style pit houses. In 1974, the Sedona folks assisted the US Forest Service during a survey of Soldier Wash, which was being uh, looked at as possible land exchange. Sedona people said in no uncertain terms, like hell you'll exchange it. Okay. And then one of the first big projects that they did was shortly after I joined the Forest Service, uh, I worked, uh, asked them if we could work with them to do an excavation that would only take about two weeks, just to test this little site. Well, a couple years later, uh, uh, led by a, a gentleman named Reed Halleck, one of the founders of the chapter, uh, he, they finally finished the excavation work and he wrote a report on it. Uh, it's an important site, it dates about 900 AD, and again we have both the northern style pit houses in the lower slide, as well as a whole calm style house with uh, notched stone slabs over on the left. Okay. We also had a lot of attention paid to our big cliff dwellings in Sedona of Honanki and Palatki. Our first work began to document the pictographs there with the assistance of Don Weaver. And with a period of very wet weather in 1988, we began our first stabilization efforts, again with the assistance of folks from the Verde chapter. In 1982, we had our first major pot hunting episode down at the uh, Fossil Creek Ruin. Reed Halleck assisted me in hiking over the rough terrain that Jerry is very, very familiar with uh, to do the documentation of the damage that helped us get a conviction against the pot hunters with both jail terms and fines. Uh, then we began to go after rock art in earnest with the Loy Canyon Pictograph Project. That took us three years, and again, working with a variety of uh, people from the Verde Valley chapter and other organizations like the Sierra Club and the Forest Passport and Time Program, we were able to document one of the largest pictograph localities in the Sedona area. In 1994, the Forest Service began to do active development of Crescent Moon Ranch, a private property that we had acquired quite recently, uh, and had the approval from our regional office to develop as a recreational campground. As different facilities were being put in, such as widening the roads and installing water pipelines, they began hitting archaeological materials. Much of this could not be seen from the surface because the ranch had been used for agriculture in the past and had obscured all evidence of prehistoric activity. Uh, we ended up excavating several Yavapai roasting pits, uh, which started piquing my curiosity about what is the origins of the Yavapai and Apache from an archaeological perspective, and how does that relate to the sites that we see in the area, such as these large roasting pits. Uh, the Crescent Moon Pit House site turned out to be an 80, 900 to 1,000 site that had not only a, a Yavapai roasting pit on it, but also a complex of prehistoric roasting pits. Uh, from this, we, see, we think we have a different pattern of roasting activity whereas Sanawa used very small, perhaps one meter diameter roasting pits, while Apache and the Avapai people used the real big mothers that you see in different parts of the, the, the district. We then decided to test one of the big roasting pits to see what we would get, and so we did the Dry Creek Roasting Pit in 1995. Uh, this was Joan Sexton's favorite po project because of the nice clean soil that she got to work with. Uh, from that nice clean soil, we were able to get a variety of C14 dates 
that had a range of occupation of hundreds of years, indicating that Yavapai had been using this part of the Sedona district for hundreds of years and using the exact same roasting pits. We suspect that some of them may have been actual landmarks that people were using to delineate their uh, tribal uh, territorial areas. The site's also important because it's next to an, a Yavapai encampment, uh, which we also did minimal testing on in the lower right. The chapter has also been very, very active in assisting archaeologists, both academic and contract archaeologists, as well as the Forest Service, doing excavations in areas that are outside of the permitted contract areas. Uh, a good example of that are the excavations that Soil uh, Statistical Research did along Highway 89 and 1998. Uh, the local chapter folks went and excavated a small uh, uh, structure on the outlying edges of one of the sites dug by SRI. And then there was a, another large site considerably outside the right of way that I was intrigued with because it showed evidence of Yavapai occupation in the terms of uh, early Hopi pottery, desert side notch points, lots of Prescott grayware. And so they volunteered to assist us do a testing program looking for evidence of Yavapai activity in this particular site. Um, it's still problematic if we actually found any evidence of Yavapai occupation, uh, but we did find a very distinctive style of agave knife that's a very common among the Pai people, indications of what could be used compacted floor surfaces, and uh, areas that were cleared of rocks that certainly looked like uh, Wikiup foundations to me. Okay. One of the biggest projects archaeologically that we've tried with the forest was from 1999 to 2004 when we had a grant from the National Park Service from the Save America's Treasures Program to stabilize and develop the ruin of Hananki for public visitation. The goals on it were to stabilize the, the walls, and most of that work was done by volunteers uh, who were taught stabilization techniques by our Northern Arizona chapter buds, uh, Walter Gossert and Tom Woodall. Uh, aided and abetted by Charlie uh, Steger, who's one of the jacks of all trade for all of our chapters. Uh, he was the mastermind who created that OSHA-approved uh, scaffold that you see there. Okay. We did excavations, minor excavations, in order to facilitate the stabilization activity uh, and discovered one of the reasons why Hononki was likely abandoned. And as the slide on the right shows, it's because the top of the, of the cavern collapsed on top of them. We found direct associations of large boulders and slabs with uh, mortar and stone. Um, and I suspect that the site was occupied, in fact, when it fell. Some surprises we had, of course, was an intact Tuzigut brown storage jar beneath the floor of one of the rooms and an intact mat uh, that had a, a stash of corn put on top of it. And the most amazing thing about Hananki is that I've never worked on a site where such small amounts of excavation yield such a tremendous amount of, of information. Hononki is an actual treasure house of perishable materials. All the time we excavate and find sherds and rocks, sherds and rocks, sherds and rocks and bones. This time we also got an abundance of perishables, which illustrates the mastery of the Sanawa in the weaving technology. People who have studied prehistoric technology acknowledge that the finest uh, textiles in the Southwest were created by both the Sanawa and the Salado. Here we see some examples of that with the weft wrapped warp technique creating the uh, designs that you see in the uh, lower and upper right corners, a string skirt on the right, one of less than six pieces of blue tie-dyed material from the prehistoric southwest in the upper left, and then a really exciting piece on, in the middle, which is the end of a carved deer or antelope hoof, identical to that which was found with the magician's burial. Hoofs like this are found also in the Prescott area, elsewhere in Flagstaff in central Arizona, suggesting the distribution of a, uh, of a religious society that was common to several different prehistoric groups in the 12th century. And then one of everybody's favorites, of course, are the agave roasts. Uh, the Sedona folks were instrumental in helping us revive the uh, use of roasting pits for, to cook agave. Uh, and over the years since we first started it, it's now become more common practice at many archaeological activities and with several of the uh, Indian tribes who use this as a mainstay of their uh, economy. Surveys have taken up another uh, large chunk of the time that we've spent working with the, the volunteers. We've done any number of surveys in the Lloyd Butte area, one in the Sacred Mountain Basin, another uh, that we are taking up in the Wingfield Mesa area to locate 
and take GPS plots on sites that were recorded during our para-archaeological training sessions a number of years ago, pre-GPS. Rock art documentation is another favorite for, for most people in the chapter. Uh, Barbara Sturgis and her group have documented numerous sites in the Sedona area. These are just some of them that they have put their talents to and that we followed up on. Um, in addition, you know, the work that Ken Zold reported on earlier uh, is also well documented in the rock art studies, such as the uh, Spirit Hunter site on the lower right, as well as V-Bar-V. And the Forest Service isn't the only organization that appreciates the work that the avocationalists have done. Members of the Verde Valley chapter have been awarded by the Governor's Advisory Commission on Archaeology, as well as the American Rock Art Research Conservation Association Award. To show you that they do keep busy, this is a list of current projects that I could think of that they're working on even as we speak. All of these activities are going on now by the members of the chapter. Uh, all of them are going along quite smoothly and are providing lots of useful information to archaeologists and the Forest Service. So because of that, the Forest Service wants to thank you all for all the great work that you do. I've enjoyed every minute of it, and I look forward to more of it in years to come. Thank you. supposed to be looking at the camera, but I want to be looking at you, so we'll... Uh... Just glance at the camera and wink in time. To... Okay. So, uh, okay. Well, I just want to say on behalf of the museum, um, thank you so much for all of your involvement, first in archaeology, and then so many of you we see every Wednesday up here at the museum involved in so many projects and I just hear so much um, about how, what a wonderful job you do, and I look forward to hearing more about your work and seeing the results of your research. But it's just, it's just so inspirational to see people who are avocational archaeologists engage with our institution, engage with our archaeologists. I know David is incredibly proud of you. He's always talking about you. Uh, and you have no idea how much he sings your praises. Um, and I'm very proud of him because to have someone of his caliber and stature really embrace the uh, avocational community in, which, in the way in which he has, I think is just really remarkable and wonderful. So I think it's just a beautiful collaboration. And um, I just thank you all for for your love of archaeology and for your engagement with our institution. So thank you very much. And I tried to synthesize 35 years of working with you people in 10 minutes. <laughs> so if I left any of your favorite projects out, I'm sorry and I apologize. Uh, but as you all heard us speak today is that we are all so incredibly proud of all of you folks. And I'm constantly amazed that you're, you're probably like the third generation of the chapter that I've worked with. And usually most groups, they're good for one generation, then it falls apart and something else happens. But for some reason in Sedona, the people down there, you folks, have kept this thing going for over 30 some odd years of all of these projects, and every single one is one that we couldn't have done without you and that we're really proud to talk about. So I have nothing but the greatest admiration, respect, and love for you folks because you're fun to work with too. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you all. There's still a little time to eat and drink. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely.
Both from like a field archaeologist.